Good morning, Jim Hodges here, Annabelle here. Annabelle's a chocolate lab that came in for our residency training program. Very good girl. The difference is night and day from the time that she came to where we are now. Uh, almost two weeks, not quite two weeks yet. She has done a wonderful job. She's a very dominant, headstrong kind of dog, but she has bought into what we ask. She's deferred to us as her leader, as her loving leaders and she's actually very happy and and less insecure than she was when we were trying to walk on a leash. She would actually go crazy. She came in with her sister, which will be a video here in a little bit, and uh, they have done wonderful together. We're gonna go through obedience. She's a little further away than most of my clients. We have clients that come from other states and, and further off areas, and uh, she's in another part of North Carolina down east that uh, probably requires me or I want to provide a little more detail in what we do. Good girl. So now why did I tell her good girl then? She was not in a sit command. I would never put a dog in a sit command for a long, long time, especially her, and I'll talk about it in just a second. But one thing that I am watching for, she was a rock eater. So if she's not in command, it's okay for her to check the ground out with her nose. But if she looked like she was going to pick something up and I would be watching her for that, I would provide a consequence, a bite. You know what the consequence is by now if you've watched any of my videos. It's some way of biting her to let her know that I disapprove of what she's doing. Timing is important. We try to do it in that moment of time when she's doing what we don't want. On the flip side of that, we make sure we praise the heck out of her. We praise her right now. at a girl. When she's laying there, when she's doing anything that would normally please us, we praise her. Our goal is to praise her 20 times, at least 20 times more during the day than we provide a consequence. Of course, in the next few weeks, you're going to have a, a lot of work to do. Uh, you're going to be spending some time with her, showing her her boundaries showing her that she has to listen to you just as well as she listened to us. And it's not going to be hard, but it's just going to take a commitment. The biggest thing I tell people is you say what you mean, mean what you say, okay? I'm going to go through and try to demonstrate with uh, Annabelle a little bit more about what I want you to do if she does happen to sort of fall out a little bit. Again, she is a headstrong girl. She's going to be a little headstrong. But you show she's the leadership, she's going to buy into it, okay? The rocks, we want to watch her with rocks. Typically, when we're working, we don't have a real problem with it, is we don't want our dogs in the act of working smelling the ground. They need to be focusing and looking to us for direction. And we need to do what? Praise them and reassure them with what's going on. Now, one other thing with uh, Annabelle here is when we do praise, Make sure they hold the command. She gets real excited uh, when she obeys. And one of her little traits that I know she's going to do when she goes home is you're going to tell her good girl and she's going to pop out of the command. Well, guess what? Telling her good girl is not a release. So if she was to pop up before we gave her the break or release command, we would provide a light consequence. Remember, we're never here to intimidate, dominate, break her spirit, or hurt her in any way, or have her fear us, okay? and make her hold it. So we're going to get going. The cats are out this morning, which is fantastic. I know you guys like to see the cats. Heck, I do. I love my cats, and I love them to coexist with dogs because they can do it in a controlled, managed environment. So, sweetheart, you ready? Okay, let's go. So let's go as we're going to walk her on our side, our left side, and we want her with us. And mom, dad, if you remember how she used to walk, this is fantastic. She would walk before, but if you made her want to walk, made her want to follow you, she became like a buck and brock, seriously. And uh, just took patience, took repetitions, took love, took a little bit of consequence, not much, to show her that she was going to have to do what we asked. And that's it. Who's going to win out? You have to win out. So let's go. Short leash, good girl. She's walking with us. If she started to smell the ground, I would tap the leash and tell her, no, let's go. If she started to move this way or this way, I would tap the leash back to me. 
One of the most important things I, I have to mention to my clients repeatedly is in the beginning, we don't want to hold the leash way up here. We want it short by her neck, okay? And the reason we want it short is so we can lightly tap and direct her immediately. The further we have our leash up away from her, the more time it's going to take to translate from leash to her neck that uh, we want to make a change. I hope that makes sense. Short is a quick little tap. It's a loose leash short. Let's go. Now, she did something there that uh, I want to make sure I address to you. Uh, labs, big bone dogs, can be notorious for having hip problems. I noticed that sometimes she sits and lays down a little funny. Uh, I would at the right age, which is probably now, I would defer to your vet with that, is have them check her real good for her hips. We want to make sure that uh, she's going fine. And if there are, con are problems or things you have to look at, we want to make sure we don't overexercise or put too much physical duress on her. So please check that on, add out on your next vet visit. Let's go. Good girl, so we're doing our walk command. So remember, we tap in the direction we want her to go. Sit. Good girl. So I'm going to pat her and let her know. Notice the tail wagging? She wants to obey. She's in a sit command right now. She has to hold that sit. What I said earlier is I told her sit and good girl in the beginning and, and even in the last couple of days. She may do it in our videos. She may pop up when we tell her good girl. If she popped up, it would be no sit. Break. Break is my release. Listen to my tone of voice, okay? When I told her to sit, if she did not sit, I would tap the leash straight up. No, sit. And then come back after a consequence and give a little bit of praise. Good girl. So she's holding that sit. If I was meeting someone or I wanted to be stationary, I would break. Just like I was at the first of the video. I don't want to keep her in that sit. If she wants to sit there, fine. But I've released her, so if she wanted to lay down, she could do it. Only thing she couldn't do right now is pull me or pick up a rock. If she started to pick up a rock, I'd, box, I'd bite her for that. Let's go. So the SIT command is just like that. We tap up the leash, tell her no when we tap the leash, and repeat the command. And then we come back and provide light praise. Not as much as if she did it right the first time, but light praise to reassure her that that's what we want, okay? So the next thing is, and in the beginning, I would do this from the SIT command, but you don't have to after you've started working her. Is sit. Good. Down. Hand signal from the side. Good girl. Notice how she was sort of uh, favoring her hip again, going to the down. I don't think she's hurting, but I think there's something we need to check out. So now she's in a down command. She has to hold that down until we release her. Okay, very important. If she started to get up or she didn't down, I would go, no, down. Sort of towards the ground, short leash again. So I'd be right here and I'd go, no, down. Good girl, when she did it. Good, so in the beginning, she would be smelling the ground when we first started doing the down. If I said, stay, good girl, she's rolled over, fantastic, I'll pet her. Because down stay means I don't care what you do as long as you lay down. Well, with Annabelle, I do care. I don't, again, want her to chew on rocks. She just has to stay in that down. Down uh, stay is an open palm like this. Okay, I will use that going from room to room. When I'm walking out of a room and I like to do it at the doors, I will go stay, I'll have her on a leash, walk out of the room. If she stays in the room, it's a good girl. If she follows me, I'll pick up the leash no, and tap it, just like in the let's go, back to the room. No, 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 stay, and then I immediately walk out of the door again. All right, so we did the D-O-W-N from the side. Break. Come on, girl. Down. Good girl. A little slow. Again, we want to check out things. Now, hand signal for down from in front is just like this. All right, different from the side. From the side, we want to hear so she can see up. In front, she's going to have a harder time seeing it. No, down. So you know she's smelling the ground a little bit. No, down. Could be some treats out here, but it doesn't matter. She has to stay in the down. 
and you saw my tap. Good girl. So down is down. She has to hold it. It doesn't matter what we're doing. Break. Good girl. Let's go. Play. Now place is to get on the bed command. She can lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what she does as long as she stays on the place. She can uh, be there for an hour or two easy. In fact, with her sister, we allow them dotted. We've allowed them to be on the same bed together, and we've also had them on different beds. And they have learned real well. In the beginning, we're going to have her on a leash, so if she got off, we could pick up the leash. No, no, like the let's go, back to place again, good girl. She's going to hold it. Eventually, and now we can go out of the room and come back, uh, pick up UPS, answer the phone. They're going to stay in place. They're going to do the same for you. I love the place command because it's a downtime command for both you and your dog, but it's also a command that is just that, a command. It still puts you in charge as the leader. Just we never give a command unless we intend for them to do it, and we're going to make them do it. The same token, when they do it, we praise them. Right, let's go. Good girl. Let's go. Set. So now we've got the C-O-M-E command. The C-O, good girl. The C-O-M-E command is where they come up on leash and sit in front of us and hold it. Come. Good girl. Now, I've got a treat here. On the come command, I like to give treats an awful lot. Right. When I'm teaching dogs other commands, I'll use treats to help motivate if a dog is so inclined to have treats. But I always try to use it on the come command. So she's there. Watch the hand signal. Come. Good. She sits. She holds it. Ah, a girl. I love you. Break. Good girl. So that's the come. Now, we also, if you have a fenced-in yard or even in the house, want to start practicing the come command without a leash or them dragging it. And the way we do this, and it's so, so important, is we get in the habit of getting their attention, and we can get their attention with encouragement. If we know our dogs are going to come to us when we start talking to them, we can show treats, we can show a toy, but we get their attention. Then when they see us and want to integrate with us, and they start to run to us, we tell them to come when they've committed to running. Why? Because when they're running, they've got that happy, warm feeling, okay? And we want to give them that word as an association for that happy feeling. Of course, when they come to us off leash, we always want to have our target here. And the other thing that we do is we want to make sure we never do anything at the tail end of the come that would seem negative to them by putting them up or uh, correcting them or doing something along those lines. If you have to put her up, if you have to take her in, have her come to you. I'll demonstrate it. Let's see what we can. Annabelle, look what I got. Hey, she's committed. Come. Atta girl. Good girl. Good girl. Break. So I broke her. I praised her. You just have to pretend like we were off leash there, okay? And uh, released her. We talk. Hey, girl. Take about 30 seconds to a minute. And then you say, oh, I got to go, girl. Let's go. Let's go. And we take her and put her up inside in a crate, whatever we may do. I hope you understand the, the difference there. I had her come. I praised her for that, loved her for that, released her for that, transitioned to something else, and then put her up. Again, we never bite her or provide consequence when she comes. That's going to cause them to lose our trust. We try to do that awfully she come as often as we can as long as we can be safe. Over and over, hundreds of times, we want our dogs to want to come to us. And we always reward them with words, touch, touches, uh, us petting them, words is good girl, and a treat or toy, and happiness. We want them to want to come to us. And we never give them a reason to distrust them. Okay? That's why we have the break at the end. Let's go. Sit. The uh, good girl. The other is the heel command. No sit. So you see, you saw I bit her for that. That's one of those things I, I potentially could worry about from the hip perspective. 
or it could have been she just wanted to try to turn around. I didn't see it. If I look at the video later, I have a little bit better idea. But at any rate, when she didn't, when she popped up, I still gave the consequence. We've got the heel command. The heel command is when we have our dog beside us, we're going to have a short leash all the time, okay? And when we start to walk, it's her job to stay in a box beside us. Call it an imaginary box, rectangular box. And her job is to stay there. Our job is to keep her there. When we stop, she sits. I'll use the heel command when there's a lot of people, like at a farmer's market or at a store or something like that, and I'll demand my dog to be real close to me. So we're, hand signals like this, so we're going to do it. Heel. So she's right here by my box. We turn. I stop. She sits. Okay? Good girl. Once she sits, I should be able to step off, and she's holding that sit until I release her. So we'll go again. Heel. We'll walk right by the kitty cat. Now here. I encourage her up. Now here. So you see, she was a little worried about the cat. So my job is to try to keep her close to it as we can. Here. Come on. It's okay. Good girl. Right. Now, what happened there? She wanted to make sure she did nothing to the cat, was giving her her distance. I saw that, and I wanted to come back and encourage her that it was okay. I wasn't going to let the cat get her, and I knew she wasn't uh, going to do anything to the kitty cat. And we come back and work that till she feels comfortable. Let's go. The other thing is, is if we allow them on the furniture and load up in the car, it's load up. Same hand signal. I point just like on the place. And a girl. Drink. Good girl. We're going to walk by the cat again. Good. Down. Good girl. I'm proud of you, sweetheart. Sit. Come on. Good girl. Drink. She's done well. She's been remarkable at the change in her in the last two weeks. I love her to death. I know you love her. You know if you ever need me, all you got to do is pick up the phone and give me a call. Forever, as long as God will have me on this earth and Rachel here with us as well training, if you ever need a follow-up, just come to us. There's never a charge for it. We want to make a difference in your life. We feel like we've taken a big step for both of you you and her, your family and her, to have a wonderful life together. Biggest thing I said, and I said it in the beginning, say what you mean, mean what you say. Another question is, can our dogs be dogs? Yes, your dog can be a dog. You can have them have downtime. Just if they do something you don't want, you have to be ready to consequence it, okay? Provide a consequence. And you know by now, my clients know, again, we're not here to make these dogs fear us. It's just trying to let them know we're the leader. We do that in the packed uh, hierarchy or infrastructure, and we do that because we teach them obedience to begin with, and we teach them in the moment, okay? So that's it. 336-945-3232. 336-945-3232. JimHodgesDogTraining.com. My site is under new development. It'll be brand new in less than a month now. Please get a chance to go visit. I plan to try to do my best to put more articles and more videos on the website, okay? Uh, Facebook is Jim Hodges Dog Training. Once again, thank you and God bless. Take care. Right.